Hi. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to char. Char is one of the eight primitive types in Java. It represents a Unicode character. A char literal is a character enclosed in single quotes, for example, a, five, or a question mark. If you need a format specifier in a format string that holds a place for a character, use percent %c. Some frequently used characters are hard to type, and for those situations we use escape sequences. Escape sequences consist of multiple characters. For example, backslash n for a newline. Notice, the backslash is the escape character, and together with the n, it forms an escape sequence that represents newline. Similarly, backslash t represents a tabulator. The single quote is easy to type, but it is already used as the delimiter for char literals. Equivalently, we use backslash double quote to represent a double quote in string literals. We also need an escape sequence for a backslash, because the backslash has already a special meaning as the escape character. Characters are represented as Unicode characters. The original Unicode specification was based on ASCII, where each character has a corresponding integer value. Here you can see a table of the ASCII code. The ASCII code has characters corresponding to the value 0 to 255. And if you look, for example, 0, 1, 2, 3, all those single digit numbers are lined up starting at the corresponding value 48. 48 for 0, 49 for 1, 50 for 2. Also, the letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, are all lined up, uppercase A starting at 65, lowercase come a little bit later, starting at 97, 98, 99, one letter after the other. I also want to point out one very special character, which is zero, it is called NUL, null, the null character. This is the default value for characters very different from zero the number. Zero the number as a character, zero in single quotes, corresponds to 48. Different from the null character, which corresponds to the integer value null. Here is an example. Let's say I declare a variable ch of type character. I assign it an uppercase A. Now, if I would have also an integer called my ch number, this is the corresponding number to my character, I could assign it my character cast to an integer, which means take my a, interpret it as an integer, and save that in my integer variable ch number. Now, when I print this, I am going to print the character representation for my character and the number representation for my number. The result is character is A, corresponding number 65. Once again, notice if I'm using a format specifier for character, percent C, format specifier for integer, percent D. I could do something similar uh, for backslash. And again, a uh, reminder, we are using the escape sequence for the backslash because backslash has a special meaning as the escape character. When I print out the result, it prints as a single backslash. So this is the escape sequence representing a single backslash. And by the way, the corresponding number is 92. Here I have a list of Unicode characters. Notice how the corresponding value of my characters is displayed as a hexadecimal number. 
This is very common with Unicode characters. I'm going to show you how you can display the corresponding value of your character in hexadecimal form. Once again, I'm using the same example. I'm expanding it a little bit by printing the hexadecimal value. Notice I added another label and a format specifier percent 04x. I'm passing once again the very same variable that I passed before. And in my output, I can see a decimal 65 hexadecimal 0041. Notice I'm passing the same number value twice whether we display as decimal or hexadecimal has no impact on the value we're dealing with. However, the display changes. Percent %d for decimal digit, percent %x for hexadecimal display. I'm going to spend a moment to explain the format specifier percent %04x. The x indicates that we format a number value as a hexadecimal number, which means in our case, it would be 41 instead of 64, but without the two leading zeros. However, we want to have 0041. This is the typical way Unicode number values are displayed. I can do that by specifying a width of 4. So the extra 4 says we have a column width 4, my number is right aligned but I don't only want to have my 41 pushed a little further to my right. I want to have leading zeros. I get that by specifying percent %04x. So I have a width of four characters filled up with zeros from the left side and my hexadecimal number right aligned. So this would give me 0041. I'm going back here to my list of Unicode characters at this point, I scroll down a little bit, you can see my numbers get bigger. And I ended up at some characters that are not on my keyboard. Let's say, for example, the pound sign is not on my American keyboard. If I want to print a pound sign, I can look it up in my Unicode table. I can find out it corresponds to 00A3. Now, in my code, I can replace my literal A with a Unicode escape representing my character. Usually I only do that if I don't have my character readily available on my keyboard. So let's say in case of our pound sign, I might say backslash U for my Unicode escape 00A3, four digit hexadecimal value that corresponds to the character I want to have. If I'm going to run uh, this code segment, my result would be character is pound. Notice, I initialize it with a Unicode sequence. It displays as the actual character. My underlying decimal value is 163. My underlying hexadecimal value, same value, just a different display, is 00A3. Some of you might have noticed an uppercase A versus a lowercase A. Those are both possible valid choices to represent hexadecimal numbers. So here I wrote the uppercase A like we saw it in the Unicode table. And then in my IDE, it printed it out as 00 lowercase a3. At the very end, I want to remind you one more time of the default value for char. It is null, n-u-l, corresponds to the underlying value 0, is also called the null character.